The Plants vs. Zombies series has remained iconic and beloved for years. Throughout that time, though, there has been pieces of a puzzle that, when all connected, create a story that is unbelievable as it is absurd. So join me as I go over everything I could find in this world. Hi everybody, I'm here at the Farmer's Market. If there's anything I love more than buying things here, it's not doing that. I love me some free samples. Just gotta be careful with some of this stuff. I don't wanna get any allergic reaction to tree nuts or anything. So I've actually talked about Plants vs. Zombies before when I rambled about how I could eat all the plants, but the story also has a good amount of stuff going on. Plants vs. Zombies takes place most prominently in this location called Neighborville on a version of Earth. Neighborville for sure is on the west coast of North America and at minimum does have some stuff in Vancouver. The biggest challenge in this story is how unhinged everything is. Characters will act purely on instinct and needless to say, there's points where I need to take a step back and wonder if my younger self would be proud or disappointed when you get to this point. Today's story begins like all stories do. The Dawn of Time! The in-universe government provides a brief rundown of the history of zombies in this universe. It takes exactly 30 minutes for the first zombie to just, like, pop into existence. Okay, then. Just like everything, it just shows up out of nowhere. Now, the zombies aren't like ordinary zombies in this case. They're more like an equivalent to humans that can be born and come from the undead. They aren't like a virus hellbent on spreading more like World War Z or something. They're very stupid humans who want to eat brains to get smarter or that's pretty low on the zombie scale. This version of history is basically the same as ours, but not really. We actually do know some important moments in history that revolved around zombies. When Greek engineers invented the catapult in 431 BC, the zombies stole it to launch themselves closer to brains. In 160 BC, Dedus Zombius took over the Roman Empire by eating all of those who opposed him. In 1492 AD, the Pope survived zombies by hiding in a cupboard for a week. In 843 AD, a zombie accidentally became the king of Germany when he warned the crown when he was bored. One time in 1687, the zombies realize er sounds like R, and that's when they became pirates, only to change their minds after a year because they all got seasick. In the most recent century, zombies mellowed out a bit, finally chilling out especially in 1921, when they all decided to work in a whoopee cushion factory. I should note the perfect thing to counter zombies in this story were the Vikings because of their metal helmets. Then one day in 1968, this company called Bloom and Doom Seed Co. was founded by Barbara Johns, who doesn't really matter. This is hardly acknowledged, but this is a company where all the plants get mass produced based on hints we've been given, but who's responsible for that? This is Christopher David Blazing III, better known as Crazy Dave. He's a funny little freak who's allegedly 36 years old. Just for future reference, I'm gonna assume the time points are the respective release dates of each game. But why is Crazy Dave crazy, you might be asking? Uh, well, we, we don't know. If I were to guess, it's either because of experiments and his big old brain making him so unhinged, or he got some wacky wild tapeworms from eating food off the ground that's established to be a bad habit of his. One day, somewhere between 30 minutes after the dawn of time and May 4th, 2009, Crazy Dave invented the first ever of these plants, a little pea shooter. He did this for a science fair, winning it, and as a result, made a new lifelong nemesis. Now this is Dr. Zombos, the commander of the modern zombies. He's also the creator of the zombies throughout the franchise after losing to Davy's little science expedition. His entire life path transitions to wanting a worldwide apocalypse because of this specific instance. After two years of studying death and stuff, he quickly acquired a doctorate in Thantology. That's the study of dying and stuff. And being freaking peeved from that one science fair probably decades ago at this point, Zomboss figures out how to bring back the dead, thus allowing him to create an uprising. And if you're wondering how or why Zomboss is the only zombie who made the rest of the zombies and why there's not any other ones, <laughs> we'll get into that, don't you worry. May 5th, 2009, Zomboss says, all right, shit's about to get bananas. I want this guy gone and everyone dead, except for the dead guys. The dead guys are my guys, they can stay. It's a zombie apocalypse. All our laws are getting invaded and what not until Dave pops in and goes, I don't worry, chief. That guy, that guy kind of sucks at existing. His forehead looks like a cheap stress ball. Here. Take my seed. No, not that other kind. Now, of course, Crazy Dave is established to be a little bit cray-cray. He makes you spend a lot of money on survival equipment despite the apocalypse. His plans are outlandish a lot of the time, but trust me, amigo, he's a chaotic good friend. This is the face of a friend. Take his little seeds. Bing bong, now we got an army. Following this for the next several days, we are at the mercy of Dave's missions and what he offers to us. What he sells, what plants we get, and rather than go to any part of the world to be zombies, Zomboss is hellbent on ending exclusively Dave's neighbor and wastes his entire army 
Tommy attempting to do so. At the end, Zomboss is about to attack himself. Dave's gonna tell us the weakness. Oh, never mind, he's being held hostage now. Uh, antics ensue, and Zomboss loses to Cabbages. They have a temporary treaty and a dance party ending. I don't know if that's copyrighted. I'm not gonna risk it. We have saved the world, but what if I told you during this entire invasion, there was another major event going on. See, not a lot of people know this, but there's actually a collection of graphic novels, each with their own Plants vs. Zombies stories. Based on some hints, the first arc, Lawn Mageddon, most likely takes place in the initial Neighborville outbreak, so it's also on May 5th, 2009. All of Neighborville's at the mercy of the invasion. Everyone's sad and scared, especially two kids. There's one named Nate, he likes food and not dying, and then there's Patrice Blazing, the niece of Crazy Dave, thus increasing the size of the Crazy Dave family tree. In case you're wondering, yes, Dave's the cool uncle, I mean, look at him. Now, funnily enough, this is the only time when Crazy Dave actually speaks proper English words that everybody understands, but this is gonna get retconned. Based on the format of the story, namely how he disappears for several extended periods, I'm gonna assume that Dave is going back and forth between his niece and neighbor in both of these events to help both groups out with his weaponized flora. This portion of the story ends with Zomboss being defeated before the first game. Then Dave runs back to the house and gets kidnapped, but long story short, now these kids and Zomboss are super duper enemies forever, and this will never change. Now, at minimum, the next arc, Time Apocalypse, has to play out before PvZ2. Not only does Zomboss create a time machine, but so does Crazy Dave. Most of this tale exists to perfectly counteract Zomboss's plans with Crazy Dave's plan. Th Plants, Egypt, dinosaurs, prehistoric plants, pirates, specifically this one named Captain Chestbeard, who's kind of important, he can time travel too also. Uh, the three most important things of note here is that Crazy Dave is a fan Fantastic disco doer. He's schmoovin'. The good guy gang makes a sun modifier, thus Zomboss loses and gets punched in the pancreas. And weirdly enough, in this series, if a character time travels to an era where they are alive, they will age to whatever age they are in that time. For example, Nate and Patrice both become adults when they teleport to the 2020s. By the way, the zombies win in the 2020s. Zomboss takes over in the year 2020. The fact that there's even a chance Zomboss used that one thing 2020 is known for, uh, that, that's in character. I guess he would use plagues. Following this, it's Probably August 15th, 2013. PBZ2 time. Wait, never mind. May 20th, 2013. Facebook PVZ game. It's traditional power offense. Nobody cares. Okay, now it's August 15th, 2013, and PVZ2 time for realsies. There's been several years worth of a time skip, but luckily we know that during all of that time, all Zomboss has been doing is trying to get the players and Dave's brain during all of it. He's doing all this in the middle of the day. Zomboss, all it takes is one act of foul play to burn down their homes. You know, for a guy with a brain larger than Lake Ontario, you sure are a dummy little dumb dumb dumbass. On this day's invasion, one of the zombies drops some hot sauce. Crazy Dave then uses it on his taco. And I'm not joking, this taco is so good that he takes his magical flying time traveling rec 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 re re recreational vehicle exclusively meant to time travel to go back a few minutes for that taco. I get, I don't know how that would work. I, I feel like you would just be like stealing the taco from yourself. And fellas, this taco doomed all of history. By time traveling like this, Crazy Dave has not only fibbed up the space-time continuum, but Zomboss is using his didgeridoo Davy detector and also time travels with the zombies and sprinkles them throughout history. Because time travel is time travel and two separate parties are time traveling, that means Zomboss most likely went to 30 minutes after the dawn of time and left some zombs there. Therefore, everything up to this point and everything after is over a taco. I can't believe this is real. I guess what I'm trying to say is taco, time travel, zombies get made, time travel, sprinkle back, paradox. Oh yeah, I'm guessing this also means Zomboss created his ancestors if he made the initial army and then they actually became his ancestors when doing the time travel stuff. Meaning that he's technically creating himself, I guess? Unlike every other zombie, he actually grows up and the undead don't typically do that. Before the 21st century, he probably would have been considered a demon child, but luckily for him, modern times are more accepting. In fact, he's still basically just a human, but with bad dental, a weird skin condition, and an obsession with eating brains. So what's that about? Uh, long story short, if I were to guess, one of his parents were freaky, and the other parent was freaky. Ew! Time for a time travel battle. Back to the modern day, the traditional PVZ antics play out until Zomboss drops a taco. This time it has a waffle on it. This satisfies Crazy Dave's need to get another taco. And the universe has been saved once again as both threats to the space-time continuum have been neutralized thanks to some epic Mexican cuisine with maple syrup on top. China. 
Depending on where you ask, Plants vs. Zombies is different, especially in China. They got their own versions of the games, extra content, extra levels, extra plants, some even being crossovers. Apparently it's buggy though, the last time I talked about this series, but a lot of people got mad at me over that. Uh, I wouldn't know, I'm not, I, 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 I'm not from China. So, sorry. This version even got some crossovers, like this one with Subway Surfers. Get out of here! I don't like you. You're not my friend. You're gross. You're weird. You're ugly. You're smelly. And you're, uh, 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 you wear, you wear a hat. All right? You're not welcome here. Go away! Evil Dave. This is Dave's evil brother who is here exclusively to make fun of Crazy Dave. I know a little Chinese, but I'm not gonna attempt translating his iconic catchphrases. This is like if a third Mario brother existed, but only for Irish copies of Mario games. Now, I would argue both sides are morally gray at this point. Zomboss is not only petty, but also jealous and ruining all of history over a science fair. Crazy Dave is the smartest idiot around, and everybody knows that's usually not a good thing. They are both entities of instinct, and I think the rest of the comics and games help to illustrate their respective insanities. Take, for example, the College Revenge arc. The Zomboss went to zombie college, and he was a dick. He was tying spiders to people's shoes, he was feeding folks to moon sharks, and he was ableist. Not a good dude. The climax of this includes him stealing a thesis from another educated zombie. He's awful. Important to note, college grad zombies can talk. For example, when his bullies return to bully, they can speak proper English. In their revenge, they intend to revoke his Thanatology doctorate and take over Neighborville instead of him. And that is bad, and they all knock it off. Meanwhile, the police have taped off Crazy Dave as he attempts to finish ice cream before it melts. He fails. So he makes flame-resistant ice cream, that is what he's doing. In Grown Sweet Home, the plants are sleepy from Crazy Dave's antics, so they move out and try living alone. So the humans teach the plants how to be functioning adults, and Zomboss, remembering his college days, remembers how to plagiarize by planting cameras in their home, and starts teaching zombies how to human as well. I guess Nate and Patrice don't have parents, they, they live with plants for the next several weeks. Eventually, both parties are able to successfully blend in, but the plants learn a little bit better, so when they meet up with Zomboss, they run away, but Zomboss goes, no, oh, we're better. So they have a human off and take a break at five o'clock. Meanwhile, Crazy Dave is making spaghetti. He fails. Working overtime, the children sneak in the zombie base for the next day. There's a parade battle, but since Dave loves parades, they win. And I'm not kidding, this conflict ends when the kids out a few zombies for eating Zomboss's Pop-Tarts, so he has everybody else jump him. And this is when Dr. Zomboss really kicks it into high gear with the absolute peak of his wrath. From February 25th, 2014 to at least February 23rd, 2016, there will be the legendary saga of Garden Warfare. The time of walking to the plant slowly has ended my friends. This is WAR! And only the STRONGEST WILL SURVIVE! Dr. Zavos recruits some of his top soldiers to lead his armada to victory, while Crazy Dave modifies some of his plants to be even larger and more powerful. In the first game, it's pure Armageddon. Crazy Dave commands his team to regain lost land of Neighborville, while Zomboss builds larger mechs and forts. This is a genuine war with attempted assassinations and tactical nukes. Later on, when the plants start losing, Neighborville is looking more like Zomtown, as Zomboss manages to build numerous Stephly bases, the leaf branch of the military, that's cute, asks one plant to come out of retirement. And so, the corn man has to get his shit together and join the fight. Uh, but I don't know why he has pores. This is upsetting. The comic that goes over this event provides more story. Nate and Patrice come from the future to truly end the fight. This is making the taco situation more confusing. On the contrary, though, Zomboss is using time portals to bring in more zombies through all of history. All the other citizens are invited to an ice cream cruise ship, so that explains why Dave's the only human in, like, the Garden Warfare franchise right now. There are two other plants, Rose and Citron, who have their origins revealed. Rose simply came from the past, there's not much to add there, but in the future, a little Citrus volunteered for Crazy Dave's Super Soldier Project, but Crazy Dave accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction. Cologne. Thus, Citron was born, and he looks like that. Please stop looking at me like that. Lots of fighting, lots of antics, lots of duels. It's super cool and intense. After hours of intense fighting, the plants are victorious. And what is Dave up to? Well, he's using frogs to close the zombie time portals. Okay. Also, uh, gnomes. There's gnomes now. They hate both sides, and they even came from an alternate dimension. You know what that means. PVZ is part of a ma 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 multiverse are you even surprised anymore like genuinely every every time 
It's a multiverse. October 18th, 2016, PVZ Hero, somehow Crazy Dave and Zomboss both agreed on temporarily being giant scary floating arms, and Zomboss uses a machine called the Herotron 5000 to turn a bunch of regular zombies into heroes. This misfires and creates the green shadow. I don't feel comfortable around pea shooters. Never have, never will. Yeah, this is not helping. With that, the plants get a whole army of heroes, and you get the idea from here. It's just plants go to place, breaking the legs and vital organs of each and every zomzom they come across. Uh, this this is actually pretty easy to understand. September 4th, 2019. Battle for Neighborville. War be happening again. In between wars, Crazy Dave has been recognized as a worldwide savior. Despite all the trials and tribulations he's endured, he's saved the world a countless amount of times. He's such an icon, he's a costume in Little Big Planet 3. So, I mean, basically the next George Washington. So now he has a mansion. That's why he has a mansion. Now, story-wise, this is very much like the other games. It's more so a collection of larger battles with top soldiers on both sides working to take down the other. Based on previous hints, we can also confirm that the plants most likely won the previous warfares, trapping most of the zombies until that doesn't happen, and now violence, but again, the gnomes are back, the evil plans revolving around the moon are back. Honestly, it's very formulaic. Zomboss keeps goofing his gunk up. All it would take is some weed killer to stop the plants, all it would take to beat the zombies, it's some violence. Dr. Zomboss is a net negative for society. I'm shocked he's still alive. The remainder of the comics helps show more of the characters and some of the problems they have. From this point on, the cycle starts to advance and kind of just become repetitive, each issue going from major arcs to one-off stories. The remaining portion of the comic can go virtually anywhere post Garden Warfare 2, and it still makes sense. The next issue is Pedal to the Metal. Cars. Nate challenges Zomboss to a race war, race war, but since all the plants were busy racing the zombies, they, uh, the other ones take over. Humans win when Zomboss slips on a banana peel. Then the kids throw a pizza party. They do this a lot. Uh, 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 also, all Crazy Dave was doing was being the designated driver and playing a game called Don't Blink. This is humanity's savior. Next is Boom Boom Mushroom. The zombies want to make a cavern base and sink Neighborville by digging all of Earth under it so everything collapses. Oh, but don't worry, this is not going to be an issue because Crazy Dave, off screen, won a pet pig named Twister from a singing competition in Guatemala and went on legendary quests through the land finding the Boom Boom Mushroom. It's a nuke. And they all want it. So using Twister's pig smell, they find the bomb and make a trap that ends with Zomboss being trampled by bulls. In Battle Extravaganza, there's a guy who turned red from eating too much of his beet bread and now he's red. That rhymes. I'm gonna get a water real quick. Now he's red and he wants to sell his factory. Both parties want it. This is where I remind you Crazy Dave has proven to be one of the most important people in the world with connections to real world governments and Zomboss has proved to be a threat. Realistically, the government owes Dave this factory. We are officially at the point where this is basically a cartoon with burnout and they just throw up ideas. Zomboss does some human trafficking for a zombie circus and forces a famine. Worst of all, he joins a book club that he's actually passionate about and then freaking Davey shows up and ruins it so now both sides are trying to get more people in their book club. That, that That's the plot of this one. Truthfully, especially later on, these stories become more one-offish and don't amount to that much. It's mostly treated like a weekly scheduled event at this point. There's nothing wrong with that, I just wasn't expecting it. Their relationships have all stagnated to a tragic level of repetition where everyone just does enough to enjoy their lives and not think about what exactly they're doing with themselves. This is the game equivalent of Phineas and Ferb, Zomboss and Doofenshmirtz even have the same voice actor. I think this is especially the point where I reflected upon everything that came before. Like, like an insane genius and a petty dead man doomed all of history with their mere existence. In the PVZ world, these two have forced all of time to endure a hellscape of zombies roaming through history. And for what? A taco? A science fair? The fact that out of billions of years, zombies have literally not only been a threat for all but 30 minutes across all that time, just because of this stuff is a little bit funny. The taco better have cured AIDS, and that science fair prize better have made, like, the 119th element. Because even if that stuff was the case, they would only, like, balance out the consequences they caused by, like... 2%? Uh, anyways, war's done. I would argue this is one of those wars where nobody exactly won, but everyone definitely lost. Especially the gnomes, they super lost. They're out of the story now. The zombies have basically retreated to their norm in Neighborville, and though all the land has been regained, we have to rebuild. And that pretty gracefully slides into the time point of January 17th, 2024. Plants vs. Zombies 3, a proper and prepared and beautiful continuation into the classic gameplay with a new coat of paint that includes plants that don't make me want to say my sins.
say for it as much. So get this, Dr. Zomboss remembering every single one of his endless amount of defeats, remembering all those years he's tried and failed that's amounted to nothing, all those horrible atrocities that have wasted everyone's time. After spending an extended period thinking about his life, his actions, his consequences, all of the failures that led to this very moment, he decides to do the unthinkable. It's time to invade Neighborville again. Oh, what? You thought there was gonna be more? No, no, it's just plants versus zombies. The plants are good, the zombies are bad. I see this more as both sides are running low on materials after a decade of Xbox Live profile pick material. I can see their mitochondrias. That's how high definition they are. But, uh, yeah, that's my justification for the events going on here. There's not many accessible plants or zombies and stuff. So now, we're right back at the start. One Nimrod forcing another into an endless battle with no outcome or change, with the same stuff, in the same place, repeating over and over with their own little twists added each time. PVZ's story is the definition of insanity, which fits these two perfectly. Why does anyone live in Neighborville, by the way? A single gun could be the game changer. I'm shocked the zombies have lasted this long. Crazy Dave has military connections. He's simply choosing to prolong this. I see it. I see it on those eyes. They look like mine, actually. As Crazy Dave would always say, gargle flarb flarb and really, that's how I would best describe this tale. Random, but consistent. Just like this franchise, and just like these characters. Well, that's all, folks. I came up with a funny idea today, but here's the deal. If you guys fix this statistic and subscribe and gunk and or share and do all that stuff, I will sing the iconic song, Zombie on Your Lawn. This isn't a bit. I, like, I, I really want an excuse to sing poorly. And now that I'm done being the mayor of Yap City, I could really go for some lovely free samples, like this cupcake. Mmm, scrum diddly. I wonder what kind of lovely ingredients are in this. Huh.